Hey everyone, it's another video with Randeep and Dan, and we got another preview coming for you as well. This time, it's the Atlantic Division, which, come on, there's a, a number of heavy-duty teams in here, some heavyweight teams that you know will be fighting for the playoffs. But Dan, when we look at this, we know that the favorites are the reigning cup champions, two-time cup champions, the Tampa Bay Lightning. But how does this division shake out for you this year? Hit us with some predictions. Well, there's still like the clear top part of the division with Tampa, Toronto, Boston, and Florida. And then there's, of course, the, you know, Stanley Cup runners up in Montreal and everything that's going on there. We'll see how they shake out for this season, but still a few rebuilding teams too. So there's the clear upper class of this division and how you think it shakes out is interesting to me. Tampa is the favorite. They're in the top three for me, but. I still don't think Tampa runs away with this division necessarily, Randy. They lost a lot in the offseason. You can't just throw out the fact that they lost the Goodrow, Coleman, and Yanni Gord line that was so important for them and just think everything's going to run smoothly. I think there will be some bumps in the road, but they figure it out as they get closer to the playoffs. And rounding out my top three is the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Florida Panthers. Okay, so you got Tampa, Florida, and Toronto. I agree with you on the top end. Tampa is still going to be an elite team. We expect them to be there when the playoffs come around, and they're going to be probably going for that, you know, that three-peat very strongly. Florida, I've been high in Florida the last couple of years, maybe too early on in their rise, but this is a team. Now and that you've you look, been calling Florida for like the last five years. Okay? I have, I have. But <laughs> it, here, here's the thing, though. Persistence pays off, right? Like you stick yes. around with the team for a long time, they turn around eventually – uh, they figured out their defense. If Aaron Ekblad comes back healthy, uh, you've got Barkoff playing for a contract. That's a scary thing for fans in Florida because this guy's going to be worth $11, $12 million, but they should be a very, very scary team. And now they have depth on top of that. The third team in that division, I'm sticking with Boston. I think Boston's got another year or two left of being a high-level team with that perfection line being fully healthy as well. Yes, Patrice Bergeron is a year older. How many miles does he have left? Marchand is one of the better players in the league. And when Pasta is healthy, he's up there with Austin Matthews and being one of the best snipers. I don't have Toronto in the top three. I'm sorry, Toronto Maple Leafs fans, but I have Tampa, Florida, and Boston. Staying true to your Vancouver roots, Randy. If I see that. Like, I'm, what do you, I'm looking what do you at got? the rosters, Dan. Okay. That's what I'm looking at. All right? what, do you, what do you got against the Leafs here? Tell me. Oh, okay, they have the high-end talent, which is very important. But you look at that rest of that lineup compared to previous years, I'm not a fan. Okay, they have a few players that they're giving flyers to. Kasha is one of them. You know, you get Nick, you get Richie in there as well. You've got Comp in there and Bunting. Some of those players will be good, but you're sprinkling them into the top six, which those are pretty big question marks. And that's why I look at that team and depth is a problem for me. You know, a couple injuries down the road. Do they have enough horses to run? Do they have enough support for their top six guys? I'm not sold on the the overall, you know, aspect of the Toronto Maple Leafs. We saw cracks last year in the Canadian division, which, you know, wasn't the toughest. Let's be honest. Now, all of a sudden you go to a team, you know, a division where you're playing two you know, very, very good teams and you can criticize Boston on their depth and they don't have David Krejci and all that, but they play one heck of a team game, which is tough to beat in the regular season. And especially in the playoffs, Toronto doesn't match up well for me. And they're actually my disappointment I don't think they're going to be a top three team. They'll be a playoff team, but the standards in Toronto, all or nothing, it's not a top three team for me. Yeah, I think I think you're reaching a little bit here on, on the Leafs. Everybody wants to see the downfall. And, and hey, I've been there uh, in the past. I, I just, I don't see it. The, the top six is still good enough. Obviously, Tavares, Nylander, Matthews, Marner, they're going to carry this team. And they should be able to look at, Who's going to compliment them? One of those flyers, maybe two of them have to shake out, of course, but I can definitely see it happening because I think the talent is already there with the studs. It's the studs and duds build that has been so widely criticized. There's a few Kyle duds Dukes on that team part. too. A few, quite well, a few duds. <laughs> maybe duds is a bit of a strong word, but you know, Kasha, depending on how much he can stay healthy, that guy's a good player, man. It's why teams have wanted him going all the way back to his Anaheim days. Bunting showed a lot in, in Arizona and they're taking a flyer on him. It's cheap. You see what happens. That's the build that this team is going for. And you mentioned all or nothing. I mean, I, I kind of believe in Sheldon Keefe a little bit more after 75 F bombs per 60 with 
the way that he is running that hockey team. So yeah, I'm, I'm in on the Leafs being in the top three playoffs is another story, but I still like the way that this team is built from a regular season perspective. Boston is my disappointment. I don't see where they make up for the loss of David Krejci. I know they lost, you know, an aging player and I'm usually the ageist guy that doesn't trust people over the age of 30, but sure. Krejci has proven to be great. You're going to tell me Charlie Coyle is just going to step up there and be great. Again, you're putting a lot on Taylor Hall to do it with players that might not necessarily be able to. And I don't know if that's the best way of getting the most out of your investment with Taylor Hall. So I'm saying the Bruins are a disappointment. They still make the playoffs for me, but they're not the elite team that we've seen them be in the last few years. Huge surprise. Dan Riccio betting against the team that Taylor Hall is on. I'm very surprised by that. Before. I don't know Never what you're talking about. happened before. All right, let's focus on the breakthrough player. And I'm going to Buffalo, which uh, nobody wants to go to Buffalo these days based on what's going on. But something has to happen in Buffalo over 82 games. <laughs> there is a positive story there. And his name is Dylan Cousins. He had 13 points last year. Expect that number to shoot up. He's going to be the first line center. There's going to be a lot of pain in Buffalo this year. You might not want to watch some of those games. But Dylan Cousins, this is a room for him to grow. And you might even see Casey Middlestadt take a step this year as well because they're going to get offensive opportunities. But the guy that I look at in really developing into that next star this season, Dylan Cousins, this is his time to shine. There's not going to be much good coming out of Buffalo, but this kid is going to be one thing. You know, they paid Rasmus Dahlin quite a bit for uh, what's been a very up and down start to his career they need him to show some promise even if they're not going to get many results this year for my breakout player i'm going to detroit and i'm buying in on the preseason that lucas raymond has been showing and i think he's going to step right into detroit's top six and be a helpful offensive player and be in the run for potentially the calder trophy i know i'm calling it a little bit early but i really like lucas raymond i think he was underrated a little bit we kind of got tired of seeing his name at the top of draft boards when the draft was upcoming. And now we're seeing the real talent start to shine through. I think Lucas Raymond has a big year for the Detroit Red Wings. All right. Forget breakthrough. Dan is going straight for the Calder on that one. So hit us up with your top three in the division, the Atlantic division. You got like Boston better. Do you like Toronto better? Hit us up in the comments. Also, who's your breakout player this year? Hit us up in the comments and we'll catch you next time in the next preview.